Imagine how much different your life would have been if you actually were an accountant and you didn't ride dirt bikes. God, that would fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> With the amount of stuff he's done in his life. No, oh, shit, that the, the, all your accomplishments, like your family, or just everything. You Dude, know everything. I mean? like, it's crazy. And that's like everything that I have, like, you know, my relationship with my wife, just all my best memories, all my friends, it's all tied in around freestyle motocross. Yep. I say that all the time. I'm like, everyone's like, oh, what, what would you have changed? I'm like, nothing. I'm like, I wouldn't have anything that I have or my friends or family around me if it wasn't for yeah. my dirt bike. Like all the people I met was from riding motorcycles. And the good and the bad. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I mean, especially like for you. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like we're cut from the same cloth. Like you don't just collect a check and sit on the couch and ride when you have to. No. When you're injured, you're more motivated to fo focus on DBK or yeah. like when you're on the couch and you're banged up, it gets you more motivated to work in different thinking, aspects. What am I going to do next? Like what's yeah. next for me? Like how, how can I like keep myself relevant and shit like that all the time? And I feel like you've always done a really good job with keeping yourself relevant and being in the limelight, like everyone still always is following you, knowing what you're doing and shit. So I think it's cool to see. Well, I mean, for me, it's like, I mean, truthfully speaking, I spent most of my career injured. Yeah. I mean, you think about my freestyle career, like I took some big ones. So I learned at an early time that I have to work way harder off my bike than on my bike because, you know, I broke both of my legs and I shattered my heel and I did all this shit. So it's like, I was having to work double time off my bike so that I can maintain my contracts in between those big injuries. When you were hurt, how did Hart and Huntington come about? Were you hurt when you thought about doing the clothing company? Yeah, that was that was going to be like a passion project. So, you know, going back to, I guess it was like right around 01, 02, I'd moved back to Vegas. You know, we were all in the race to get covered in tattoos. <laughs> and, you know, ar arguably kind of like the, 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 the top of my career, you know, all the flip shit had been going on. I wanted to open a tattoo shop uh, in Vegas just as like, you know, kind of like how Soul, Soul Expressions used to yeah, be. Yeah. Like we'd all just hang out, like is our spot. So I started going down the process of opening H and H tattoo in the palms. And, uh, and then that, so I guess it was like the fall of Oh three contractor signed. It was just kind of moving its way down, down, down the, the field. And then I got hurt on Tony Hawk's tour and just, you know, smoked me, broke everything. I come home from after being in ICU for a couple of weeks and almost dying and the whole thing. And, you know, I, I remember like sitting on my couch in, in a wheelchair, both my arms busted, both my legs bust, busted. And it's like, all right, this tattoo shop, this could be the next phase of my life because I, at that moment, I didn't think I was ever going to ride a dirt bike again. Yeah, I remember it was gnarly. I remember Feist calling me like, hey, Hart got fucked up today. They're in, and it was funny because everyone was like, Tony Hawk killed Kerry Hart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that exactly. Was like the rumor that was going <laughs> that was around. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, well, on, on the Boom Boom Huck Jam tour, there was the, the vert ramp in the middle and then we had like a single lane track around the outside. And uh, whenever the moto guys would ride, there was tape where, okay, no skaters can go past this point mm. because the motorcycle was jumping over and it was pretty close to where, like you could almost hit someone, right? Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, was it Tony that jumped up and like he stood like right in the way as you were coming at the ramp or something? Well, what happened was, as I remember it, like it was the second day of tour. And I don't, I don't know how it was when you were, well, obviously changed. I only got on tour because you got hurt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Basically, every, it was the second day of tour, and the way we ran the show was all off of uh, the music cues. Yep. So as the show's going, all the skaters and BMXers doing their thing in the ramp, and then they would hear a certain music cue, and then they would know the show was progressing. <clears throat> well, me being on the dirt bike, sitting in the corner, I can't hear anything. I have a corner man. So it was night two. A couple of people got hurt night one, and uh, so they basically, it was the finale when everyone's riding and going. A couple of guys, they were running slow in the vert ramp. Mm -hmm. So when the queue came, they were still on the outskirts of the ramp. I get my corner man queuing me. So you remember you would stage, you can't even yeah, see the vert ramp. you can't hear the music or see it. Yeah, you so jump onto the track. I get the go motion. I hit the first turn and go to take off. Well, Tony just pops, he finished his run. He popped out on the deck in front of me. Well, they were running about seven, eight seconds slow. So it was no one's fault. It was just the timing of everything. So as I'm going to take off, he pops out. My choice was go right into the crowd, and hit him. Yeah, into the net, hit him or go left in the vert ramp. So I carved left and oh. ditched my bike and landed on the far wall, kind of like a cat. And uh, yeah, folded my femur up, shattered my heel, both arms. Damn, all four limbs. All four, second time, all four limbs. So gnarly. What yeah. was the first time? <clears throat> I was uh, 15, getting ready to go into my last amateur race at the World Mini in Vegas. And... Uh, they were building a new track in Vegas and my old man was building the track and it was, it was a week, maybe a week or two before world mini. And, uh, he had me and someone else come out to do some lap times to kind of figure out how long to run the motos. 
So they, the track was done. They were just putting topsoil on it because <clears throat> it's that shitty Vegas dirt. And um, anyway, so me and my buddy geared up and my old man called everybody off the track to go to lunch. So we go take off. Well, one of the guys, for whatever reason, jumped in a skiddy or sorry, not a skiddy, a scraper. And the, the, you went down a start straight, you made a right hand turn and there's like a big massive tabletop on the infield, probably two, three stories tall. Me and my buddy Rich, we take off down the start I swept the outside turn and there was like a big pile of silt on the inside that they were still knocking down. As I came over the takeoff, the dude swung in on the scraper on the backside to dump a load of dirt. No. And I didn't even hit the ground. I just fourth gear on a 125 right into the into back the of the scraper. Yeah. Both arms. So I like hit it. <clears throat> when I hit it, it broke uh, both femurs, uh, one in five places, one in six places. Dude. And then it flipped me over and then my tib fib and then uh, both wrists. But then when I landed, I kind of did like a, kind of like a front flip and landed in front of the tire. Well, when I hit the, when I hit the scraper, the driver felt the, the scraper ludge forward. He looks down and he sees me laying in front of the tire. He thought he ran you over. Well, well, he, I, I think he knew what happened. I'd hit it, but he panicked and jumped out without setting the brake. Oh. So he jumps down and the tractor or the scraper starts sliding down the hill. I put my hands up like this is about to run me over. And luckily a mile man swooped me up and pulled me out. No, but way. I compounded my femur, like had a tourniquet, my leg almost lost gnarly. my leg. Yeah. I've seen a video. You kept that gear, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I kept I the remember pants. You, I remember you pulling some pants out saying like, I almost died in this gear mm -hmm. right here. And there was like dried up blood all yeah, over Yeah. Just covered. Yeah. I almost lost, almost lost my leg, almost bled out on the way to the hospital. 